With great power comes great responsibility. Compromise where you can. Where you can't, don't. Even if everyone is telling you that something wrong is something right. Even if the whole world is telling you to move. It is your duty to plant yourself like a tree. Look them in the eye and say no. You move. Never step onto the battlefield of ideas unprepared. Before you enter the fray, you need a plan. And there's no better place to get one than right here on Tactics with host Caleb Colquitt. The Situation Room goes live now on News Radio 1440. But most of all, we must trust God to heal our nation that we can take back the freedoms and liberties that God has so amazingly allowed our nation to have. God says he will turn the hearts of the kings. This is where we can pray and trust God to give our governor the ability to make the right decision for the people of Alabama. Governor Ivy, open Alabama! Yeah! Governor Ivey, this rally was organized to display Alabamians' urgency to get back to work. It's hard to understand the plights of small, the small business owner that has been forced to shut down or the worker who's been laid off. The voices of many business owners, independent contractors, and workers need to be heard, and that's why we are here today. We are here with one purpose, and that is to ask you to immediately approve the reopening of Alabama's economy. It's time that Alabamians are allowed to protect both their lives and their livelihoods. And please know that we are praying for you. Today was supposed to be a car rally where people stayed in their cars and circled around the Capitol. Everything was good to go, like Suzelle said, but now they have cut off the streets due to construction, but I hope y'all will pan around and see there's no construction. These roads are newly paved, they're gorgeous, and there's no construction. They just don't want us to protest. So we're out a block farther, but now they're pulling people over for honking their horns. This was a rally about opening businesses in Alabama, but I think it's gonna turn into something more. People are waking up. So we thank you for coming, keep coming, we'll be here till three, and honk those horns, you have a right. Thank you. Hey, just to give everybody a heads up here, uh, <laughs> boy, the wind is blowing really hard. So what we've got going on right now and, and what we're trying to, to do is we have the roads blocked off in front of us because of all the construction going on and by all i mean none i mean there's literally nothing going on but they've blocked off all the roads not only right in front of the capitol but all the ones leading up to the capitol they've blocked us off for a, about another block down the road and because of that we're not getting nearly as many people come up tell their stories which was the purpose of all this so i'm not exactly sure what the plan is right now we may wind up moving we may not uh, we've got some horses and some bikers going by right now, and uh, of course the media is all up here, but since they blocked us off and since people don't want to get out of their cars, they actually want to abide by the regulations and, and social distancing, they're not able to do that now, and so they've effectively tried to do everything they can, it seems like, to stifle this protest and keep it from happening, but here we are in front of the Capitol, and... Uh, looks like there are a lot of people driving around. There's a lot of people honking, coming by. The original plan was to have people pull up right in front of us, come out of their car, say something really quickly, get back in their car, never have to interact with anybody, never have to touch another surface, never have to get within six feet of somebody. But unfortunately, because of the government's regulation, they've actually made it more difficult to do that, which ironically is, is pretty much par for the course, considering everything that started since this virus started taking place and since the shutdown order started, it's the same thing with the curfew. The intention was to keep people from distancing, but it actually made it harder for them to social distance. And so that's really where we are right now. Uh, we, we're really just trying to formulate a game plan here, but we'll be here with News Radio 1440 trying to make sure that you have all the latest coverage. We'll cover things as they happen. We haven't had anybody take us up on the offer to step up to the podium and speak. Uh, it looks like we're we're kind of packing everything up and moving on. So if we have to end the broadcast, we have to end the broadcast. That's just the way things go sometimes. We might try to bring you something either uh, via a mobile station, via phone, 
Uh, but, but we'll work on something. That's the point. We're, we're going to get something done here. We're going to try to work it out. Hopefully, we'll get all of this sorted here in just a bit. Um, so now the police officers are telling us we have to move along because there are 12 of us instead of 10. Even though about three of the people here are media people, including myself, but anyway. Hey, right. hey, right. hey, the camera people, y'all gonna have to get off the sidewalk. They won't let us have more than 10. Can I get sidewalk? Yes. yes I'll get off the sidewalk. Okay, thank right. you. All right, well, y'all gotta get off the sidewalk. You can't have more than 10. All of them are you gonna shut down? I, I may have to. Okay. All right, we yeah. got 10. Is this a sidewalk? One, two, three, yeah. Well, you can stay. The media's getting off the sidewalk. Do, the do I need to move? Sorry, media. That's. Yeah. It's fine. If you can step up, don't yeah. touch the microphone. Okay. You can just step, step okay. up there and talk to me about why you're out there. Y'all go direct. We're out here for Stand Up Alabama, Operation Back to Work. We need to go back to work now. The small businesses of Alabama cannot wait one more week. They cannot wait even one more day. Every day, small businesses is revenue they'll never get back. Georgia has opened. Florida has opened. And other states have opened. It's time for Alabama to open. Alabama yeah. is the state that we dare to defend our rights. Governor, I think mean, these are inalienable rights to work. Open up our state. We believe that you care about the people and the businesses of Alabama. We are here to support you to do that. That is our message. Governor Ivy, we are supporting you to open up our state now. We need to open now. Thank you. All right, so the, uh, the the newest regulation that they have made up basically as they've gone along is there cannot be more than 10 people on the sidewalk at the same time. So we, we are trying to social distance, and I mean, I've got true risk factors, so I'm definitely trying to make sure that I'm maintaining proper distance from people. Um, we, we may have to pack it up. That may just be where it is. Uh, but we'll give you an update as soon as we figure out what we're doing. Uh, we'll try to continue to maintain coverage. And... Uh, it, it looks as though we've got less than 10 here now, so it should be okay. But uh, the media is interviewing some of the people who have come out to talk about this, so hopefully uh, you know, some of that will wind up on the evening news with our friends at uh, different various local news outlets. But it, it really is quite a thing because the only reason that we have more than 10 people here is because of what they've done with trying to shut it down. It's really quite astounding that they, they make a rule that completely throws everything into chaos, and then when chaos ensues, they say that the chaos is, is wrong and we've got to do something about it. I mean, like I said, the whole purpose was that we wouldn't have very many people here on the street and that we would be able to do so while social distancing. We're law-abiding citizens. We want to obey the guidelines. We want to obey the rules as much as humanly possible, but when they do things like this, that makes it very difficult for the thing to do. And as has always kind of been my philosophy, the way to know if a law is good is if the average law-abiding citizen can go about his day-to-day -day life without being an obstruction of the law. In, in other words, without being in some kind of violation of law, it should actually be somewhat difficult to break the law. And they've done the exact opposite of that because I guess they, they don't like what is being done through the legal process, the rights guaranteed by the First Amendment, freedom to protest, freedom to uh, issue or address some grievances to your government, freedom of speech. They don't like those things, and now because of that, they're making up rules as they go along to try to stifle it. it. It really is uh, incredible to see. And the thing is, I don't blame MPD. MPD's just doing their jobs. They're getting orders from other people. Like, this is not coming from them. And I, and I understand that. I bear no animosity whatsoever towards our officers. They're just following orders. And so really, the issue is is that it, where what it's co what's coming from the top. So... It looks like um, they're they're moving down here. Uh, I don't 
know if there's going to be anybody else coming up to the podium, but we're going to be here at least for a few more minutes, try to see where things go. It seems like things have, have calmed down. Uh, by the way, if there is anything in the comment section, I know that I'm, I'm not on my, all my normal platforms right now because we actually had an issue with the Wi-Fi. So we're not on all of our normal platforms right now, but if anybody does have a, a comment to make, anybody wants to give some feedback, I am looking at the live stream feed right now. So uh, if you have any questions, if you, you want to say anything about the situation, feel free to do so. Fire off in the comments there on Facebook. I'll be here listening and, and reading those. So it looks like we actually have quite a few people watching. So hopefully that remains the case. And by the way, to all of our listeners on tacticsradio.com doing our first ever live coverage on location for the audio only stream uh, we certainly appreciate you being here and we thank you for being patient with us i know that we were expecting a whole bunch of people to be able to come up and talk because the road was supposed to be open right here that obviously has not happened uh, so we will try to adjust as much as we possibly can it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do a whole lot of that right now all right and we're back with the coverage of the get back to work alabama rally going on here at the capitol building well not actually at the capitol building because like i said they've actually blocked off traffic and, and kept us from uh actually being here at the podium so what i've done is i've, I've rearranged my other camera so you can actually see where the action is going we may have to move stations here in just a second but uh just to give you a, a glimpse at what it looks like here uh just from dexter avenue uh you can see down there where the police barricade is and where some of the protesters are and we've had people driving by for uh, pretty consistently for about 10 15 20 minutes been keeping an eye on it uh we may wind up having to leave stations here in a second i, I may wind up doing something either remotely i'm not exactly sure what the plan is um, but we're working on that right now. We spoke at one, and um, we were supposed to have the rally up here, but they blocked us off. And so now the people are congregating down there. All right, so not sure exactly what the plan is right now, but uh, we'll continue to bring you some kind of, of coverage, even if we have to do so from a distance, which, I mean, let's be honest, is kind of par for the course right now. <laughs> but uh, let's see. By the way, thank you so much for being with us here and uh, watching our continuous live coverage of everything that's going on with the rally. Uh, it looks like because of the, the way that the police officers have blocked everything off and, and the way that they've shut down this street, which uh, I love that their excuse is construction because not only is there not a piece of construction equipment in sight, but this road is brand new. <laughs> I mean... Uh, I would believe that there was road construction going on in Mississippi before I would believe that it was going on right here in front of the Capitol building with the way that everything is set up right now. But nonetheless, it looks like we may wind up having to uh, to move or, or to end the stream entirely. Uh, luckily, the law enforcement officials have not told us that we have to do that yet. Uh, so hopefully that is not an issue. All right. Go ahead. My name is Dwayne Gaither. Uh, I've got the best timing in the world. I started my business on March 18th, and on March 20th, the government was shut down. I've got a business. I train people in industry and in small business on OSHA compliance and safety. Uh, the goal of my business is to make a safer workplace and a safer world. Uh, I feel like it's hard to make a safer work workplace if you don't have a workforce. This is hurting us. Uh, Governor, the reason that I started my business, you may not even remember it, but I met you in Auburn uh, on the university at the Red Barn at a rally, and I spoke to you for a couple minutes afterwards. And what we talked about developing a workforce in Alabama uh, led me to leave my career at Thermo Fisher Scientific and uh, start this business. Um, 
people are hurting. Mankind has been having pandemics and, and disasters like this for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, seeing death is a sad thing. I've been a soldier. I've been a police officer in this fine state in Opelika. And I, walking up here, I saw several police officers that I know from 30 years ago. Uh, everybody says they're just doing their jobs. When you ask them why this is going on, well, we just want to do our jobs. We can social distance. Uh, cancer taught me that I can social distance away from people and still be functional. Give the small businessmen, I don't want your money. You know, I, I applied for unemployment. They turned me down. I said, okay. I applied for the loan. I don't have enough history. They said, okay. I don't want any money from anybody. I just want a fair chance. We will do everything safely, and we'll bring this economy back. Right now, all I'm looking at is my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren having to pay for this misguided experiment for generations. I don't want anybody to die, but the truth of the matter is, in this world, in this life, people die. Uh, Benny Atkins, Sergeant Major Atkins, was one of my father's best friends. He just passed away. Uh, he was a fine man. He was going to die one day. You're going to die. I'm going to die. Everybody that I see here is going to die. We don't choose the time and the place. The Lord chooses that. But the Lord also gives us the direction to make it on our own. And that's all we're asking for is the ability to make it on our own. Uh, my business won't last another month. I just cashed in my 401k so that I can pay the bills and I can keep that lady over there and keep the roof on her head. She's got a daughter, I keep the roof on her head. One works in, in the retail industry at a, at a food store, running into people every day. My daughter is a, a waitress at a Waffle House. And I've traditionally been the breadwinner. And you have taken the ability for me to earn for my family away. I wish that you, and this is a political, um, you know, Senator Jones, Senator Shelby, I, I don't care what political party you're in, you need to take politics out of this, take it out of there now, and think about your constituents. If I don't know, there, we drove around the block a couple of times, there's probably a few hundred protesters here, but there's probably a lot more people concerned about this. Quarantine the elderly, quarantine the, the at risk, but let these young folks, let the healthy folks get back to making a living. We need it. Uh, if you don't, we'll, we'll never be able to get it back. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, I hope you have a good day. Thank you. Whew. There's finally a little bit of shade over here. Hopefully that lasts. But uh, what we've done here is we're working on trying to get um, the roads open up. It looks like they're going to continue to close them. Uh, the officials, the, the people that have shut it down, uh, it doesn't look like they, they want this thing to happen. They've already closed down the roads and, and basically preparation of that. Uh, I am strongly contemplating just driving through here tomorrow to show that there's not an ounce of construction going on. And I mean, you saw with the live shot that we had of the street, there, there's no construction going on here. Uh, and it, it's amazing that the only place that they've shut down for construction is just the uh, the block, the two blocks leading up to the Capitol, and somehow none of the others had any issues with that. So that's been fascinating. Uh, but anyway, it really does go to show that when government tries to, there's a there's a concept that we need to consider here. I think known as good faith, and. The people of, of America in general, and I get that there's exceptions to this, they try to operate in good faith. Uh, when it came to worship, and the government started saying, you guys don't need to gather together in your places of worship, we said, all right, but this is really important to us, so what we're going to do is we're going to have hand sanitizer at, at every entrance and exit, we're going to have families sitting six feet apart, um, we'll even stay in our cars in some cases, and just worship from there. We'll, we'll we won't even actually um, congregate. We won't even actually congregate inside the building like we normally do. We'll even stay in our cars and we'll do the absolute best that we can to try to comply while also following our religious convictions. 
And then the government said, um, no, we're going to fine you for doing that anyway, even if you're making an attempt to follow the guidelines and do everything in accordance with what we've laid out, we'll just make up some new rules that say you can't do that anymore. And so it really does go to show that even when the citizens operate in good faith, sometimes the government just straight up tries to keep them from doing it anyway. When they try to do the things that they would normally do in their lives, but do so in a way that adjusts to the new guidelines by the government, and, and there have been so many Americans, right and left, it doesn't matter about that, that have tried to do that, and the government just absolutely shuts them down, and you can understand why after that happens. You can understand why when the government shows that it has no interest in operating in good faith or giving a break to people that are trying to comply with the laws, that people start getting angry and, and start getting upset and say, well, pfft, if we're going to do our absolute best to abide by the guidelines and you guys are just going to throw a big middle finger up to us anyway, then screw it. We're just not going to deal with it. And I know that that's not always the best attitude to have, and, and I know that there are people that definitely go about it the wrong way. But my overall point here is, and I think that this remains to be true, that once that happens and, and once the government does that, what they are doing is they are basically though I would say not intentionally, encouraging people to just not worry about the guidelines. When you see people really making an honest attempt to try to be in compliance with the law, and those are the very people that you try to keep from doing something like that, that you basically spit in their face when they try to comply, well, that's how you get people that assume that the government is operating in bad faith, and they are. And that's another one of the big reasons why it's not a good idea to trust the government. They will always abuse power when they can, even when it is, it, even when it comes to people that are genuinely trying to obey the law. And so I, I think that that's really kind of where we are right now, with people trying to stay in their cars, trying to social distance, not trying to do anything out of the way. And then the police officers say, no, you, you can't even do that. You can't even organize a protest trying to organize in a way that is in compliance with our rules. We're just going to shut it down anyway, which actually makes it more difficult and actually means that there are going to be people that just throw caution to the wind and gather together like we're seeing happen right now. I, I wish there was a different way to do it, and personally, I'm staying away from it. I'm, I'm staying back here just because I, I have a couple risk factors, and I am worried about it, and I do want to be in compliance with the guidelines. But my point in all of that is, when you make it difficult for people to do what they want to do while complying with the law, you understand why people get justifiably frustrated with that. I'm not saying that that justifies all their actions afterwards. But you understand why people say, look, we tried doing it your way. We tried to do our dead level best to operate within the confines of, of what you set forward. And, and now we just can't. Now we can't do that. And even when we try to do what you want us to do, you spit in our face. So, of course, there's going to be some blowback from that. And I think that that's unfortunate but but that's the way that human beings operate and that's something that people need to understand i'm not trying to justify any bad actions they would take afterward i mean i'm not in any way trying to do that i'm just saying that there's something to be said for trying to to let people operate in good faith and when you don't do that there are ramifications that are kind of predictable all right so we're going to go ahead and I guess what we'll do is we're going to switch over to our live coverage where you, where you can actually see the street view of this. So we'll be back in just a second. Well, if nothing else came out of this, we've got a horse riding lesson going on here. This is the scene from the steps of the Capitol building. made everybody disperse uh-huh um, but we got clarification that if you're a family the ordinance doesn't apply so people are standing in um, their group of family okay which is good because guess yeah. what as families that's what we're trying to let the governor know sure let us take care of our lives right and our families okay 
so I just got an update from Stand Up Alabama in case anybody here wasn't able to hear that. Uh, what the police officers have done, which actually is probably a pretty good idea, uh, is they've they've said you can't congregate in big groups. So what they've done is they've broken them up into smaller groups and they say you're only allowed to stand with your family, which uh, on the surface still sounds like a constitutional violation. So I've definitely got my qualms about that. But on the other side, I do think that one thing that is, is super helpful here is that... Um, if anything, it, it kind of does put on display that there are a bunch of families here that are are rallying to try to show their support for this cause, and, and I think that, if anything, it might actually help the optics instead of hurt them. So, you know, we, we'll see exactly how that winds up going, but um, the, the fact that they have them sectioned off and you're only allowed to stand with your family group is probably not a bad deal. Now, uh, it's real interesting for somebody like me who showed up here by himself but and doesn't, doesn't really have any family here. But nonetheless, it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting take. And you can see that the, the crowd looks a little thinner. It's actually pretty much the same amount of people. All they've done is they've just spread them out a little more, which is good. Like, I, I don't really begrudge the, the police officers for doing that at all. That's probably a smart idea. So uh, that's how we, you know, that, that, that's the status of things right now. Uh, and there are people out here with signs, with flags. Uh, I've seen quite a few Gadsden flags. I've seen uh, a couple of Trump rally flags, which, you know, it's not really a presidential rally, but they can fly what they want. Uh, lots of American flags, a couple of Alabama flags. And, uh, I mean, the thing is, it seems like everybody is really trying to, to be in compliance with the police officers. We haven't had any, you know, ra there were some tense words between, I saw one protester and a, a cop sort of going back and forth verbally, but it never escalated anything past, you know, what we were, ex what you would expect. So, I'm not sure exactly uh, what the plan is now, but we'll we'll bring you an update as soon as we can. And if you are watching this uh, and you happen to be near downtown, by all means, just hop in your car, do a drive-by. Don't have to get out of your car. Don't have to stand on the sidewalk or anything like that. Just uh, drive by and you know wave, honk your horn, whatever you you have to do. But um, that's where we are right now. So. All right, we've been going for about an hour now. It's it's two o'clock, and um, it just because of the the way that everything's happened and the government trying to shut this thing down. Uh, the truth is, there's just really no way to get people to come up here, walk, you know, the the length of a city block, and then some to be able to come up and speak. And that's really not the way that it's it's turning out to to be. So, what we're probably going to do is we're going to go ahead and wrap up our broadcast for the day right here uh again I, I apologize for it um you know this wasn't what we planned this was what, not what we originally intended to do uh but the the way that it all happened to work out and, and the way that this thing just came down um this is just the way that it happened and I, I hate that um i hate that the government decided that it was better to stifle free speech than it was to to have to deal with it um i i, I detest that and the, the their measures actually wound up making social distancing protocols harder which is ironic uh, but it just it doesn't seem as though we're going to be able to uh, to get it to, to anything productive today so uh, with that being said we're going to go ahead and I think we're going to go ahead and shut down our broadcast unless something big happens uh, I may be able to, to bring you something short tonight like during the coronavirus update or something but uh, we will do that and as always uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this content we'll be back on the air if not today because you know we've, we've done a lot of broadcasting today so i may not be able to work in a show today i'm going to try to uh, but if not today definitely tomorrow and we appreciate you being with us for the get back to work alabama rally hopefully um everything that we've done here has, has been productive and if nothing else just the pain sure in the uh, the sheer pain in the butt factor has <laughs> at least caused the conversation to go forward a little bit i'm hoping that that is the case so uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and pack up, and I thank you everybody for being with us. Stay the course, friends. Tactics is a production of News Radio 1440 and Cumulus Media Montgomery. 
Opinions expressed on this program are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Cumulus Media or our business partners. Graphics by Jessica Dawson. Video production by Jackson Dean. Broadcast studio provided by Faulkner University. Location studio provided by the Dalreda Church of Christ. Copyright 2020.